we will get into that part now where we'll see all the properties of magnetic field lines. Now, I'm sure that these things are too basic for you, but at some point, I, point of time, you have to understand that uh, from this part itself, a question can be formulated. Okay, so let us understand all the properties of magnetic field lines and then we'll go ahead because obviously, as you know, that there is a lot of similarity in terms of the forces that we see, you know, attraction and repulsion between uh, the, the charges and the magnets. So there's certainly going to be an analogy. And if you understand that analogy, if you understand that just by replacing certain terms of all the things that you have already studied before, just by writing it in terms of magnetism, things are going to be super easy for you because you don't have to redo it again. Okay, all right. But to start off with, to start off with the basic understanding of the theoretical concepts on magnetism, we must understand, first of all, the magnetic field lines and the properties of magnetic field lines. So the first difference I would say was that we told that at the positive charge, the electric field originating and where they are sinking they are sinking at the negative charge so there is a particular source from where all these lines are originating and there is a particular sink where all these lines are sinking in that does not happen in case of magnets in case of magnet outside the magnet the field lines go from north to south pole but inside the magnet, it goes from south to north. I know you know all these things. These are very basics. I know it, right? But for the sake of completion, I need to tell you all of this stuff. Okay, so just bear with me for some time. We'll be soon moving to that aspect which you don't know. Okay, but even then I would recommend that you must write down all the properties of magnetic field lines at one place so that any question and trust me, it is going to be a theoretical question because it's all theory. Any question based on the theoretical understanding of the magnetic field lines and its properties, if at all framed, will be very easy for you to answer. All right. Okay. So let's start looking at the property. The first thing, of course, the idea that outside the magnetic field runs from where to where? North to south. And inside it goes from south to north. Right. You can see the diagram right over here. Okay. Now let's quickly see the definition as we go along with more properties one by one. So the magnetic field lines are a visual and intuitive realization of the magnetic field. Okay, so it's a visualization of how you see the field exactly the same way how we actually described electric field lines. What are the properties of magnetic field line? First thing, magnetic field lines form closed loop. And this is a property which is different from, different from the electric field lines. Electric field lines did not form a closed loop. If you recall, electric field line, if I just draw a plus Q charge over here, if I just draw minus Q charge over here, you remember it started from plus Q, it was sinking in. This is how it was, right? You remember this? Started from? positive charge it originated from the positive charge it sinked in the negative charge correct but it was never going the other way around not from negative to positive but over here what is happening is you see it starts from north it it is outside the magnet when we are looking at it outside outside what is going on is it is going from north to south but inside what happens south to north so they these are closed curves okay closed loops what is the next property okay so yeah, you can see the retro look, the, the bookish look, because obviously it's all theoretical, right? So the tangent to the field lines at any given point represents the direction of the net magnetic field at that point. Obviously, if you want to find the direction of the magnetic field at this point, what do you do? Draw a tangent. This point, what do you do? Just draw a tangent. At this point, what do you do? Just draw a tangent. All right. So a tangent to the field line at a given point represents the direction of the net magnetic field at that point. Got that? Very simple. Okay. Let's turn the page, move on to the next property. Yeah. The next property tells you that if I compare 
The magnetic field intensity at these two locations, let's call this as A and let's call this as B, where do you think the magnetic field intensity will be higher? Obviously, the closer the lines are, the more will be the value of magnetic field intensity and the far away the points are, or sorry, not the points, the lines are, then obviously the magnetic field intensity will be lesser at that point. So closer the field lines, stronger is the magnetic field. So magnetic field at this point B is more. All right. Okay. Perfect. Let's see the next one. Let's see the next property. The next property is magnetic field lines never intersect each other. Why should that happen? Why the magnetic field line should not intersect each other? The reason is, see, very simple, because we have just now defined that at any given point, if you draw a tangent to the curve, you are going to get the direction of the magnetic field at that particular point. So if you have a magnetic field line, at any point, you want to find the direction of the magnetic field at that point, all you have to do is draw a tangent. Now, if the magnetic field line would have in intersected each other, then what would have happened? It would have caused a problem. The problem is, see, if I want to find at this point, the direction of magnetic field, there are two tangents. One is in this direction. Another one is in this direction. Correct. How can the same quantity have two directions? Correct. That is why the magnetic field lines can never intersect each other. Okay. Now, just like we had seen in case of electric dipole, two equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance is what we used to call as a dipole. You remember plus Q and we had minus Q and from the center of this, it was equidistant, right? Correct. We had a dipole. Something similar will also happen in case of the magnets, right? 